गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे आई बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट पैलेट सो पैलेट देर आर टू टाइप्स वन इज हार्ड पैलेट दादा वन इज सॉफ्ट पैलेट यू कैन सी दिस डायग्राम सजाइटल सेक्शन ऑफ हेड एंड the brain so this is as you all know this is the nasal cavity and the tongue and the small passage is oral cavity so this is pharynx nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngopharynx and this is the partition that separates a nasal cavity from the oral cavity is palate as you can see anterior most it is made up of bone mainly of bone so this forms the hard palate posteriorly you can see it is mainly made up of muscles that is smooth muscles so this part of the palate is called as soft palate so hard palate acts as a partition between so this hard palate it acts as a partition between the nasal cavity and the oral cavity it's anterior two thirds so this is the alveolar arches with the teeth and this is the image taken from on the inferior aspect of hard palate so this is alveolar arch with the teeth and this is two bones you can see the hard palate is mainly made up of two bones number 1 palatine process of maxilla number 2 horizontal plate of palatine bone so these are two bones that are uh, that forms the hard palate the anterolateral margins of hard palate are continuous with alveolar arches and the gum the posterior margin so this is the posterior margin it gives attachment to soft palate superiorly got floor of the nose and inferiorly it is related with roof of oral cavity now we'll see we what is the arterial supply the greater palatine artery it is the branch of maxillary artery venous drainage pterygoid plexus of veins lymphatic drainage upper deep cervical lymph nodes and retropharyngeal lymph nodes now supply to heart palate greater palatine and nasopharyngeal branch of terigo palatine ganglia which are suspended by maxillary nerve so this is about hard palate <coughs> if you examine the patient ask him to on opening his mouth you can see all these things so these are the teeth and this is hard palate here the posterior part which is moving so that is soft palate made up of mainly of muscles can see small elevated small things that is popping out so this is tonsils this arch is called as palato glossal arch and this arch going behind the tonsils is palato pharyngeal arch so i'll repeat again uvula the small projected tongue like process mini tongue like process uvula palato glossal arch the small arch is palato pharyngeal arch in between these two arches you got the tonsils so and this is the tongue that you can see which is depressed with the help of a tongue a depressor this is a philtrum so this is hard palate soft palate part of soft palate is uvula part of soft palate is also the arches that is palato glossal arch behind will be getting palato pharyngeal arch now we'll go to different parts of the soft palate so first we'll go no what is soft palate it is mucus covered fibromuscular glandular curtain fibrous it is made up of fibrous tissue it is made up of smooth muscles it is also made up of glands it is present at the posterior margin of hard palate it extends backwards and downwards between the nasal and oral parts of the pharynx the anterior part is fibrous 
the middle part is muscular and the posterior part is glandular so it is called as fibro musculo glandular curtain so what is soft palate fibro musculo glandular curtain now we'll see what are the action or how does the soft palate helps in deglutition number 1 number 2 it helps in speech number 3 helps to blow air through the mouth by closing the pharyngeal isthmus these are the main actions of soft palate so we'll see what are the different parts when relaxed it is quadrilateral in shape so quadrilateral in shape the anterior surface is concave looks downwards forwards and presents a raphe the posterior surface is convex this is the posterior surface convex directed backwards and upwards forms the outer boundary anterior boundary of pharyngeal isthmus so it has four borders on the upper border two lateral borders and the lower border it is made up of bilaminar fold of mucous membrane bilaminar means two layers the lining epithelium is stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium in almost all the parts it contains palatine aponeurosis palatine muscles how many other five other and now send vessels palatine aponeurosis is a fibrous framework where all the palatine muscles are attached so you should always remember this palatine aponeurosis all the muscles are attached you can see can you see this musculus uvula and this is palato glossal arch and this muscle is palato pharyngeal arch palato glossal palato pharyngeal musculus uvula all these muscles can be seen in this diagram so how many muscles are there the small soft palate is composed of five pairs of five muscles so this is musculus uvula which forms the uvula next is palato pharyngeus muscle palato pharyngeus muscle next is palato glossus muscle or palato glossal muscle tensor valli palatini tensor valli palatini levator valli palatini levator valli palatini the one which is green in color that is palatine aponeurosis clear fine attachment of muscles of soft palate so same thing is seen here we got levator ana palatini tensor valli palatini palato pharyngeus then palato glossus musculus uvula so 1 2 3 4 5 muscles are there five muscles that you can see of the soft palate so this is exactly how it appears so nasal cavity the oral cavity with the tongue heart palate made up of bone at the posterior border of heart palate it gives attachment to a soft palate made up of five muscles covered by mucous membrane you also observe a ridge here called as pseudoventus ridge i'll tell you later what the ridge is or the ridge is now we'll go to details of this go to the as i told you there are five muscles so all muscles will be having or we should study it in origin insertion nerve supply and action the nerve supply is common for all so we will uh, deal it separately so just i'll tell you we will be discussing about origin insertion and action of each muscle levator valli palatini levator so action is elevates the soft palate and also closes the pharyngeal isthmus origin 
it arises from under surface of apex of petrous part of temporal bone carotid sheath and it inserts into palatine aponeurosis forming u shaped sling so this is about levator valli palatini levator valli now we'll go to tensor valli palatini tensor it stretches or depresses the anterior part of the soft palate it also dilates auditory tube now we'll see what is the origin scaphoid fossa of medial pterygoid plate lateral fibrous lamina of auditory tube sulcus tube and spine of sphenoid insertion palatine aponeurosis it forms a round tendon and finally inserted to the palatine aponeurosis next you can see this muscle that is musculus uvulae musculus uvulae arises from posterior nasal spine of the hard palate insertion submucous tissue of base of uvula submucous tissue action pulls the musculus uvulae forwards next palato glossal arch so this is palato glossal arch under surface of palatine aponeurosis insertion passes downwards and forwards under cover of palato glossal arch by the side of tongue it is inserted action elevates the base of tongue closes the oropharyngeal isthmus the last muscle that is palato pharyngeus muscle so palato pharyngeus muscle so this one you can see the so origin anterior fasciculus from the upper surface of palatine aponeurosis the posterior fasciculus from lower part of or lower surface of palatine aponeurosis it is separated by insertion of levator valli palatine muscle separated by insertion you can see here so the, this is two fasciculi which are separated by levator valli palatini insertion posterior border of lamina of thyroid cartilage pharyngeal raphe pseudoviscous ridge so we were discussing about the pseudoviscous ridge action elevation of larynx and pharynx closes palato pharyngeal arch so action u shaped sling of three muscles levator valle palate elevates palate pseudoviscous ridge derived from palato pharyngeus approximate the pharyngeal isthmus sling of palato glossus no, narrows the oropharyngeal isthmus this is the diagram that you can see is the tongue palato glossal arch palato pharyngeal arch musculus uvulae and this is levator valle palatini and tensor valle palatini i will go to arterial supply venous drainage and lymphatic drainage arterial supply is supplied by greater palatine branches of maxillary artery ascending palatine artery branch of facial artery palatine branch of ascending pharyngeal artery three artery supply it venous drainage whole of soft palate drains into pharyngeal venous plexus via paratonsillar veins lymphatic drainage drains into retropharyngeal and upper deep cervical lymph nodes we we'll go to nerve supply so you got three things motor sensory and sensory motor so for motor all muscles of soft palate are supplied by accessory now except tensor valli palatini which is supplied by mandibular now clear fine secreto motor fibers are derived from facial nerve for this is this is for the glands the sensory nerve supply is from greater and lesser palatine nerves special senses that is taste sensation is by glossopharyngeal and lesser palatine nerves we'll come to the last part that is and the most important part that is applied anatomy so there are two applied anatomy mainly number one congenital anomaly that is for cleft palate number 2 paralysis of soft palate in lesions of vagus now causes nasal regurgitation of liquids the nasal twang 
flattening of palatal arch and deviation of uvula to normal side so this part is affected so in this left part left side is affected so the uvula is toward facing towards the normal side so and also the depression of palatal arch can be seen in the diagram so this is cleft lip same cleft lip it, it extends to the palate it becomes the cleft palate so there are different types of congenital cleft palate number one bilateral you can see here number two unilateral only one side it is not fused partial midline cleft palate then cleft soft palate bifid uvula so there are five types of congenital cleft palate that you need to remember then structure the soft palate comprises of epithelium connective tissue and muscles epithelium is derived from ectoderm maxillary process the muscles are derived from first fourth and sixth branchial arches so these are the things that you should remember while studying soft palate now i'll just tell you a few things something about pervescence ridge some fibers of the sphincter palatopharyngeal sphincter are left behind and form a sphincter inner to the superior constrictor muscle at the level of heart palate these fiber constitutes pervescence muscle these muscles is best developed in case of cleft palate so as to compensate to some extent for the deficiency of palate clear pervescence muscles are best developed in case of patients with soft palate so this is the end of soft and hard palate usually soft palate comes as a main question or it can come as short notes so you should remember five muscles you should remember the mucosa lining epithelium you should remember arterial supply venous drainage lymphatic drainage and nerve supply of all these muscles thank you